March 9, 2018 4 57 p.m. Pacific Time by Eric Gardner as the U.S. government gets set to fight at Federal Court, the Department of Justice on Friday submitted a trial brief that sharpens its theories on why the $85 billion merger deserves to be blocked. Justice Department officials say the outcome of the case will chart the course for the future of video content delivery in the United States and are also ridiculing the other side's response. First, there is the Star Wars defense, everything the government is telling the court is stale and out of context, it is from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, the government states in its brief. To the contrary, as will be shown at trial, the government is challenging this merger to address the real concerns of real people who populate the real marketplace today. And tomorrow as well, since the acquisition would give at. The fact that this is an evolving industry does not provide a reason to let the challenged acquisition proceed. Just the opposite, it provides a compelling additional reason why it should be blocked. The three-week trial begins on March 19 and will represent one of the most important antitrust trials in American history. Although the U.S. government has taken bold actions in the past including forcing Hollywood studios to divest themselves of movie theaters in the 1940s and breaking up local and long-distance phone services in the 1980s, antitrust regulators have traditionally shied away from attempting to stop a vertical merger, that is, one between a distributor and a supplier. In November, after Donald Trump promised that the ad Incentive and ability to substantially lessen competition by withholding or raising the price for content is one thing, but what does the government specifically think will happen should the merger pass the judge a scrutiny? Relying upon experts, the Justice Department submits in its brief and will assert at trial that several things harmful to consumers are more likely to occur than not. First, the government will attempt to prove that cable and satellite customers can expect their monthly bills to rise. The brief says this adds up to hundreds of millions of dollars more than they do now to watch their favorite programs on TV, in its own trial brief, at. They think that billions of dollars in efficiencies from the merger will translate into a price decrease for customers, and even if the government is right, they say it's minuscule. For example, in his initial report, the government's expert claimed, with startling and implausible precision, that the merger will cause consumer pay TV prices to rise by a monthly total of 27 cents per subscriber, or less than 0.2% of a consumer's average monthly bill, states the brief. Just a few weeks later, after fiddling with some input dials, the expert managed to almost double that insubstantial result to a still insubstantial 45 cent monthly increase, all of 0.4% per bill, which is where the government currently stakes its case. The government is also suggesting that the merger would harm competition by constraining at. Currently, a number of distributors use HBO in its shows like Game of Thrones and Silicon Valley to win subscribers and market share, but the government asserts this will change if at. Perhaps most controversially, the government contends that with two vertically integrated conglomerates in the media space, at. Dish Sling and PlayStation View are singled out as posing a particular threat to at. Unlike an independent Time Warner, the merged firm would share with Comcast a strong interest in slowing our blocking disruptive new entry by virtual MVPDs, states the government's brief. The firms could advance this shared interest by withholding from virtual MVPDs Turner and NBC content, two of the most important network groups for virtual MVPDs, or restricting their use of that content, e.g., by prohibiting inclusion of channels in skinny bundles. Because market conditions are conducive to coordination, and because a coordinated denial of content to virtual MVPDs would face relatively few obstacles, the merger likely would facilitate coordination and lead to higher prices, fewer options, and reduced innovation. This foreclosure claim is a more narrow one than the government originally suggested, at that the merged entity will not withhold Turner programming from rival MVPDs, Charter, Dish, Verizon, but nevertheless, the notion that content will be withheld from cord cutters signing up for digital streaming packages is a remarkable and unprecedented one, is for coordination with Comcast to harm virtual MVPDs, at Turner receives substantial affiliate fees and advertising revenue from these virtual distributors, says defendants brief and Turner would have rapidly diminishing relevance and a grim long-term outlook if millennials and other cord cutters did not see Turner channels in the programming arrays offered by online providers. Indeed, it is far better from Turner's perspective that consumers choose virtual MVPDs that carry its networks than that they sign up only for non-network-based services like Netflix at merger, for its part at. Indeed, as at 
trial team headed by Craig Conruff says they will be calling industry witnesses to explain the importance of Turner content and their vulnerability to price increases by the merged firm, here's the government's brief in full, and here's at the trial brief so omit any reference to Trump and speculation he is against the merger because of his distaste of CNN. In late February, U.S. District Court Judge Richard Leon declined the defendant's bid to force more discovery about possible White House interference and stated in a ruling that the evidence wasn't there for 